Buck up. There's the turret. There we have the turret inside. The Coming turret up. Inside. Very clear picture. Back in 1978, we got our first view of the USS Monitor since it sank off the coast of North Carolina on December 31st, 1862. The Monitor was the famous ironclad ship of the Union that took part in the iconic stalemate with the CSS Virginia off the coast of Hampton Roads in the Civil War. They call the Monitor the little ship that saved the nation, right? And this crew uh, included African Americans, it included immigrants, it included people from different socioeconomic status. Over 20 years of preparation later, in 2002, a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and Navy expedition battled rough currents off the coast of Cape Hatteras to recover the turret from its watery grave 240 feet below the surface. Chopper 10 was there. But this was only the beginning. The massive artifact found a home at the Mariner's Museum and Park in Newport News, where it has undergone restoration efforts ever since. At this point, we've removed about 10 tons of marine growth off it. Along with the turret, thousands of parts, water pumps, gaskets, and cannons were recovered and are being processed right now under the direction of William Hoffman. We have the most complete and early steam engine room in the world. Why everything's in tanks is to basically use electrochemistry to chemically break down the corrosion to free those ocean salts. So today we're being visited with some top members from both the Navy as well as the Naval History and Heritage Command as well as um, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So this is essentially an open house. You're just going to follow me straight in. Just watch your head. It's something else to be in the tank next to the turret and feeling the gravity of the story. It's something that I think helps sort of buoy us over the course of a very, very long project like this one. The conservation project is planned to take around 33 years from the recovery of the turret in 2002 to the public display date of 2035. Before I went to graduate school, I was volunteering here because I knew I was very interested in archeological objects. Lori King, years later, is back at it. The conservation of the monitor means a lot to me. It is a process that I saw started when I was in high school. As someone who is very passionate about cultural heritage, being able to work here and see it firsthand and see the real progress that it's making, it's, it's amazing. We're also here because we're setting the stage for a major endeavor to re-support the turret. And that structure, which is currently being used to support it, is now in the way of us advancing the treatment of the artifacts. So in the next several weeks, we're we'll working with Newport News Shipbuilding to basically remove the old structure and put the turret on new support stands, freeing access to the roof. The new stands were designed by Newport News Shipbuilding. They were fabricated by Kalana Shipyard apprentices. They were painted by Fairlead Boat Works. And then rubber pads that are going to sit on top of them are provided by Hampton Rubber Company. So it's a real team effort of um, partners in the region. With the roof more easily accessible, the team can advance the process of getting the artifact ready to be seen by the world. Our goal here, as we'll see both from Monitor and from Museum, is about telling the stories of people. The mission is to tell stories through objects. Well, you need to be able to ensure that the objects are cared for and are able to be seen. And so if you can't do that, then you don't have an object, you can't tell a story. You can do some of it through history, through storytelling, but a lot of it's done through here's the thing, here's the object you can touch. And so our job is to ensure that that can be done for generations. At the Mariner's Museum and Park in Newport News, Mike Marrero, 10 on your side.